Good morning, good morning, good morning. Hope everyone is doing well. Happy Wednesday. It is May. Oh my gosh, May. What happened to the year? I don't remember what it was. Christmas. All right, so it's May. It's happy spring. It's finally some uh, sun's in the air. Snow is melting. I'm going to go snowboarding this next weekend, and then I think it's going to be into summer sports. So for today, uh, sorry, I got like a little bit of bed head. I got my coffee. We're going to talk about neuro-linguistic programming and neuro-associative conditioning. If you've never heard of these things before, that's okay. We'll talk a little bit, but these are some other tools to be aware of in your, in your sales to kit, toolkit, in your sales blueprint um, that can kind of help you take it to the next level. So again, there's all these different methodologies, uh, spin selling, <laughs> spin spelling, band selling, MVPQ, uh, you know, all these different things. And you want a consultative, and you want to make sure that you master one before you kind of go to the next one. So it's good to know all these things. It's good to know the basics. But remember, don't want, you don't want to be a um, jack of all trades, master of none. It's good to be a specialized, you know, specialized generalist where you know two or three of these 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 methodologies and master them. So let's talk about them. neuro linguistic programming. What is what are these things? So I, I first got introduced to NLP. Neuro linguistic programming is NLP, and neuro associative conditioning is called NAC. I got. I got introduced to this, oh, like when I used to live in Japan, I had a friend who was an NLP practitioner. He swore by it. NAC was actually popularized by Tony Robbins. If you don't know who Tony Robbins is, big motivational kind of success coach. Um, I was talking to a friend of mine about this. If you want an introduction, there's a free movie on Netflix called I Am Not Your Guru. We kind of, it's, it's a good documentary. I like it a lot. And I've actually been to a Tony Robbins event in Tokyo, and it's a long story. If you ever want to hear the full story, you can uh, message me, and I'll, I'll tell you it. But I knew his translator. There's more to it, but yeah, it was, it was pretty amazing. Anyway, neuro-linguistic programming is a methodology that aims to understand and influence human behavior patterns, basically. It, it's a very good, useful tool if you're in tech sales. It really is how to improve your communication and how to influence the other person by using specific language patterns. So that's kind of what that is. Neuroassociative neuro conditioning is more for yourself. It's, it's a method that combines neuroscience, behaviorism, cognitive psychology, and allows you to create new habits and behaviors. This is really good to getting in what's called a peak state or a flow state. It's another way is getting like, how do you become a top performer in sales, right? So. This is something that's used by actually a lot of athletes. Um, Olympic athletes, they use this. Um, uh, I'm forgetting his name. Conor McGregor famously used this to win a lot of his championships. And the reason was he, had to, he, he was actually doing Tony Robbins um, consulting. Uh, Andre Agassi, uh, Tiger Woods. There's a few people. But a lot of peak performers use NAC, Neuro Associate Conditioning, to get into this flow state or top performance state. So if you are in sales and you wanna be the top performer in your organization, it's a good tool to know. And then with neuro-linguistic programming, it's really good on how to influence the other person, especially when you're in sales. So that's kind of like two sides of the coin. I could definitely go into more about this. There's a whole history on it that's pretty interesting to me, but we'll save that for another time. So how does this, how do you use it? So. I teach you actually, if you guys are interested, um, I've been helping a few different students every week now, mock interviews, how to do the best interview they can, how to reach a new level in sales. I've been doing resume rewrites and LinkedIn rewrites and cover letter rewrites and uh, just career consulting in general. And we've had some great, um, great success. Some people getting more promotions, some people getting new jobs. Uh, but I, I dedicate a full hour usually to the person so I can deep dive into this. So I'll give you a thumbnail sketch right now on how to best use this. So for NLP, the first thing you want to do is understand the customer's style. What is their communication style? Are they more of a visual person? Are they more an auditory person? Are they kinesthetic? Are they more a numbers person? If you talk to like accountants, like let's say you are going into an interview and you're talking to kind of like this, uh, a certain company that is more focused on numbers, they, they're more, Digi um, like an accounting firm, right? You want to make sure that you're using language patterns that reflect the metrics a lot more, especially with CEOs. If you're talking to a CEO, you, you might want to like consider putting that in there or the CFO. 
if you're talking to more like a sales director, say you're in sales and you're talking to a hiring manager, right? It's a lot more emotion based. It's a lot more energy based. They are looking for those people that have positivity, enthusiasm, energy. So you got to know what kind of style your audience has and what kind of language patterns they use and their communication style. So you can kind of match that and build that rapport. That's the second thing is building rapport with NLP. The number one thing is like sales 101, sell yourself first. And how do you do that? How do you sell yourself first? It's actually not by like constantly talking, it's by pulling back and letting the other person talk, okay? Asking good questions, letting the other person tell you about themselves. Don't putting the, not putting the focus on yourself, put the focus on the other person, okay? So there's certain things that you can do. I was talking to an, uh, a student of mine the other day and you know one of the big things is asking open-ended questions. If you're not sure what that means, Closed questions are questions where the end answer is either a yes or a no. You know, did you get up this morning? Yes. <laughs> Open-ended questions is more getting the full full response and, and kind of drawing that information out. So how did you get up? Walk me through your process of getting up this morning. Well, I ate breakfast, I did this, I did this, I did this, yeah, I worked out, right? It's a lot more of the style of like how and why, right? It's asking those questions instead of a yes or no. So I hope that made sense. I don't know if I explained it correctly, but you wanna make sure that you're building rapport with NLP. You wanna make sure you're understanding the customer's communication uh, style. Now, for NAC, you, this is like, you wanna be very self-aware of your own behavior patterns, right? What are some things, and we all do this, what are some things that you're noticing in your habits throughout the morning, afternoon, evening that are self-sabotaging? They're not serving you best. You have to be very, very self-aware. In sales, for example, for a lot of people, the majority of people, you know, the morning is so crucial. It's from that, like, I would say 8 a.m. to noon period, or for me, it's like 8 a.m. to 2 p.m. is like, my, like that area where I have great energy, I want to get a lot of my sales stuff done, I want to do a lot of my efficiency and productivity things done, and I really want to maximize that time. But how do I get into that state of just like jumping into it, right? So that's kind of where this comes in. You know, if you're having trouble getting going in the morning, if you, if you want to be more focused, if you want to have a more productivity, this is where like you want to identify those patterns. So this is, um, if you've never heard of it, you want to create positive anchors. And an anchor is a physical or mental trigger that associates a particular feeling or emotion with a specific behavior. So what it does is it actually is a body movement that you can do that puts you into what's called a peak state or peak performance state. So if you, you know, for a lot of people, okay, look at Usain Bolt, right? He does this like this thing and he's known for that. That's an example of a good anchor. It's some physical movement that puts you back into that state of when you were at your best, okay? So for a lot of athletes, for example, there, there was a story about this one, um, this one uh, quarterback that would always do this one wrist movement every time he would mess up because if he messed up, he did this, his brain would reset and then he'd go back into a peak state and be able to like win championships. Tony Robbins, for example, if you see him before he goes, <laughs> before he like kind of gets on stage, he has all these little physical triggers. He does this like, ah, uh, yeah. This whole physical, it's putting your whole body into something to get you into peak performance state. For me, for example, the way you do that is you want to write down all the times that you were successful. What are those emotions? And then you're going to link them to a physical pattern in your body that can easily take you back to that kind of mental clarity and emotional state. Um, and you, you do this once and then you have to reinforce, reinforce, reinforce. That's the thumbnail sketch. But this is a really good thing to do right before you start making sales calls. It's a very important thing. Neurolinguistic programming, it's good for knowing it so you can influence the other person. Neuroassociative conditioning is really good for I have a certain state on when I want to focus on something, when I want to like plan my day, a certain other types of um, anchor and conditioning for when I'm making sales calls. How do you do that, okay? And if you can do this repetitively every single time, 
your sales will go up, your money will go up, your commissions will go up, and also you're just gonna be more fulfilled at the end of the day. So, hope that was helpful. Um, I'll let you know two, two that I do. So, it depends if I'm in the office or if I'm at home. It's very, very different. Uh, when I'm at home, it's a little bit easier to be a little bit more, I don't know, theatrical. So I do uh, a few different things to kind of get me like pumped up. I might like jump around or something or like totally do a physical uh, movement that puts me back into a state of when I was like really kicking ass at sales. You know, there's a few times I can definitely write down where I'm like, dude, I, I, I'm doing very, very well. I'm not going to say how much, but yeah, very well. And still doing well, but you know, it's kind of like you want to zero in on some of the top ones and kind of relive those. And then there's subtle ones that you can do at the office. Uh, I st <laughs> there was a time where I was doing like these big movements and people were like, what are you doing? And this is kind of a time where like I, I mentioned it, but I didn't want to give everything away. So I made it very subtle. And one of them is I just press the side of my wrist. So what you do is you basically visualize all the times that you were successful in one area and you want to kind of link it to one physical positioning. And for me, it was like the inside of my left wrist. So every time I touch my left wrist and I'd be very subtle at the desk, I touch it, I, my, I could definitely relive those moments and your brain works so fast, it's a supercomputer. So I was able to go back in that and you, you feel your body straighten up higher you're more vocal projection. You're, you're getting back into that same state as when you made those sales. That's the key. So um, I would do that subtly at the office. When I'm at home, I might be a little bit bigger and some other movements that kind of put me in that state. But yeah, I'm, I'm really like talking a lot <laughs> this morning. Anyway, that's like the real thing. So you, you really want to start getting better at you know, identifying your behaviors. You want to identify the other person's behaviors. You want to make sure that you have, you know, maybe two or three anchors that can help maximize your productivity and put you into a peak state. You also want to make sure that you practice visualization from time to time. This is visualizing the past successes and visualizing future successes. Okay. And the other one is basically you have to reinforce. You have to, it, it, this isn't like a one and done thing. This is something you want to do on a routine basis. Initially, ideally you're doing it every single day. I mean, this takes like five minutes, by the way, it's not that long. It takes five minutes, do it every morning, do it every evening, do it for 30 days straight. And then you could do it on more of a routine basis. This is exactly what I did. I would, I I'd visualize it, link it to an anchor, reinforce it, use it what's called in the field meaning in like and real life when i'm doing like sales calls or doing like anything in life and and then keep routinely doing it or going back to it from time to time so initially it's exactly like you got to do it all the time and then you can kind of lightly pull back as it becomes more natural to you so food for thought on that one uh, but i hope that really helps uh, anyway, so that's like a little bit of a summary on NLP and NAC. And uh, again, I do t teach this a little bit more deep dive um, in my career consulting. Uh, we had one person, we've had a few people actually, we've had one person double their income on a new job. We had another person increase their, their they got a promotion for 27% increase. And you know, a lot of this stuff is like just stuff that I've been doing for a long time and I'm happy to share it. Um, usually I do a, a free call at the beginning so I can give you guys some help. If you have, uh, if you want a free resume review, send your resume over. And uh, if you need some extra help, you know, reach out to me. Um, but happy to help and I want you guys to succeed. So feel free to contact me. I'll leave my contact details in the description below. And I uh, hope you guys are doing well and uh, it's going to be a great year. All right. Cheers.